Hey guys, Aaron here with Conover Trades. So I'm going to do a special little video here today, um, kind of a little bit kind of diving into market psychology a little bit. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about possible, you know, maybe bull bear case into uh, the end of the year. Because we're at a point here where there's a, we're at kind of a critical juncture. Today's August 22nd, 2024. And um, we're ahead of the Jackson Hole meeting. Um, actually, it started today, but we'll get the uh, the news tomorrow. So we could go to, you know, new all time highs, we could uh, come down, right, the market, you know, we, nobody knows yet, but um, we are in front of that. But I'm just going to make the case here for either side, really kind of going into the end of the year, and um, kind of get into psychology just a little bit. Um, uh, currently, I'm pretty much neutral um, into Jackson Hole, um, previously was very bullish um, at the lows here. And um, We've rallied more than I thought we would. I, you know, obviously sold a little too soon here, but obviously market in a very, um, you know, very uh, stretched position here, at least in the short term. Although it, it was stretched to the downside first, to be fair, um, and we have seen, you know, melt ups like this before, you know, namely last year, um, where we simply just keep melting up, and then when we pull back, we pull back through time, not price. So. It's not that these things can't happen, but right now, market in a stretch position. So I'll just talk a little bit here about what could happen. Again, this is not a necessarily a prediction video, although I have my biases, obviously. Um, but we'll talk about the bear case here. Um, there's a couple of obvious things, right? Um, recession risk, that's kind of more macro. Um, jobs data revised down yesterday. Um, the worst revision since 2008 or seven, I think. So. And that was with them faking the numbers, um, you know, taking extra time to release the report. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's that's the obvious. You also have, um, you could argue fragility um, in the financial system, right? So VIX hitting 66 and then dropping to 14 in two weeks is just volatile in of itself. So there's, there's kind of this, um, just incredibly vol incredible volatility where we have these swings from one extreme to the other in very short periods of time. Um, so we've got that. We also have the fact that this melt up here, um, we did not build any support on the way up. And that's one of the things I always talk about is even on an intraday basis, I mean, the daily, we're, we're talking about the daily here, but even on an intraday basis, outside of the this one little sell day um, two Wednesdays ago, there is not a single, I mean, we can we make it, we got an hourly bull flag here, an hourly consolidation to be fair. Um, but there, pretty much outside of that, there's no consolidation. It's just melt up. So if something happens, the market doesn't like, there's nothing to stop the market on the way down, right? Um, if we were to, to uh, head lower, I mean, we could look at our fibs. Well, we don't have actually any uh, horizontal support here. I mean, you can argue maybe the gap fill, you get the gap window, sure, but that is a problem. So um, another problem here is sentiment. And it's amazing because I was famously in here two weeks ago, actually, we'll flip back. Um, I said, I want us, I was the only guy on the whole internet that said, I want us red today. Um, and I want us red so that we, we, can guarantee that we're going to go up. Um, so, or at least, you know, that's the idea. And that's exactly what happened um, right before AAII. So Wednesday, report released on Thursday, I knew people would be bearish if we closed a week, uh, Wednesday afternoon, and we did, um, which is funny. So that was two weeks ago. And now we're already at a bull extreme. You can see it right here. The bearish jumped from 25.2 to 37.5 two weeks ago. Bulls are already at 51.6. Um, one year high is 53. Anything above 50 is very, very high in the bulls. Um, and bears obviously dropped off pretty precipitously. So they're at a four week rolling low. So already sentiment is positioned extreme. Um, short term technicals positioned a little extreme. Right, four hour RSI, a little overbought. Daily's not. But you know, you're also coming into a double top here. Right. And you don't want to, and this is the other thing here that would be kind of bearish, at least going into tomorrow, is you don't want to be, if you're, I said this last week, I said, bulls kind of need to chill out a little bit 
Um, the last thing you want is to be melting up into a volatility event, right? You don't want to be melting up with no pullbacks in front of the Fed or in front of the CPI or in front of the jobs. Likewise, if you're puking and selling off into that, it's probably going to be the other, you know, you're probably going to look to buy dips, right? Because the market's essentially pricing those things in with that prior price action. So those are bear things. Um, other, other reasons it could be bearish, rate cuts, right? Um, and that could be bull or bear, but um, historically rate cuts, they, can, they tend to go either way, at least at first. So if the economy does go into recession, it ends up being very bearish, that first rate cut. Um, it, and that's, a, that's kind of a thing that takes its time to really show in the data. And they're doing a lot to, to stop that data from really showing. But rate cuts could be conceived as, could be seen as uh, bearish, especially if we run up into them and price them in. So that's a, that's a risk um, into the end of the year. Another big risk, big, big, big risk is election uncertainty. However, that is, a, that is the case every election year. And um, you can see that pretty much historically, even if we go back to 2020, um, we had a pretty good sell. We had a 10% correction here. And um, we typically, here's a little tidbit, you know, if we're into a low around Super Tuesday, it's usually a good buy, little secret. Um, the, like, Big money has to be hedged like you so they they it doesn't matter if there's one percent election risk or or twenty percent they have to be hedged against that tail and those tail hedges will usually push price down into super tuesday um and when they roll off you know it goes higher and even if something does happen where there's an election contest again those hedges are already there they've already priced it in so yes you might get a a, a shot down but when they get closed it brings everything up Usually, I'm not saying that can't be different, but that's usually a thing. But so you have an election uncertainty and just general, you know, seasonality, that quarter area. There's lots of other things we can talk about, um, you know, macro wise and, and so on and so forth. But that's kind of your big case. You also, you know, you got a double top. A lot of markets have topped with double top before. Not to say we couldn't go a little bit higher and then maybe roll over. Um, but that's a thing. Another thing that is pretty big is semiconductors. Semiconductors are uh, leading to the downside, actually down three and a third today and wiped out the last four and a half days of trading in one day. And they are way off the highs. The NASDAQ is also way off the highs as well. And um, you can see here, we have not, uh, technically we'll call that a 786. We got there, um, but it, it has not, certainly hasn't passed the 786 retrace whereas the spiders have why does that matter in the bull market you want the nasdaq leading um the nasdaq and or the russell and right now the the, the spiders are leaving uh, are leading so you're going to need to see that change at some point here that's really the like the biggest bear those are the big bear points that i can i can make here um that said I'm still going to be bull biased here and defer to the trend. I have other reasons for thinking that we're going to go higher into the end of the year anyway, but the bears have, I'm, right now I'm pretty neutral right now. So I'm like, I'm not really positioned in any directionally in any which way you know, outside of a few stocks that I, I like right now. Um, I want to get positioned a certain way, but when I see things I need to see, but I will say the bears have a, have a chance here. They have a window, but they have to do damage soon. And you want it to be done, I would say, within the next week, um, because with the closer we get to that quarterly OPEX, the harder it's going to be for them to damage the chart as we get those, those big uh, supportive flows coming in. So they're going to have to do something soon. Um, that doesn't mean we can't pull back, grind sideways, maybe correct a little bit. But if they're going to damage, like turn this into a bear, another bear move, big bear move, they need to get, get going. So essentially, that's kind of the bear case here um, for me. The bull case, and what I kind of want to talk about from a psycholo uh, psychology standpoint here is, so we got to get into this. So we talked about sentiment a minute ago. Um, the bull case, well, let's talk about the macro. So rate cuts can be positive, and um, 
everybody thinks like, oh, well, as soon as the Fed cuts rates, then I'm going to go short. That I'm going to short that immediately. But um, that's not necessarily a winning strategy. Um, if the re- economy, if the data gets dragged out, even for three months, six months, uh, where it's still kind of decent employment, I mean, the employment numbers are still not... Um, they're not, I mean, by some metrics, you know, with the revisions, they're not good, but they're still managing to keep it propped up, right? If they can, if they can prop it up a couple more months, rate cuts could actually be seen as bullish if we're not headed towards a recession, or at least um, as far as the Wall Street algos are concerned. So don't think that it's just a slam dunk. And another thing is a lot of people have that same idea. And if a lot of people have the same idea as you, it's probably not going to work. That's why it's so hard to time a recession. Um, from a positioning standpoint, because you could be right about every little detail um, in regards to that, uh, except for the fact that everybody else has got the same idea. And we know positioning the market's a voting machine, not a weighing machine. So that's kind of the the macro reason here. Um, Another macro reason, too, is that um, it's possible that I, I believe we will go to recession, but we had four recessions in the 70s. And we still had rampant inflation. Um, there's a possibility that the, the, the recession is shallow, right? <laughs> like nobody's thinking about that. No one's thinking about that possibility. Um, what if the data starts coming in and everybody expects to get really bad and then it just kind of tails off? That's a possibility. Not really what I'm uh, making the bull case for, though. Um, but the bigger reason is the psychological aspect of it. Um, so if we go that, like, down to the, like, just the core of what the market is, it's a voting machine, right? Um, more buy orders and sell orders, it goes up. And if you get to a point where there aren't any buy orders left, because everybody who bought, wants to bought has already bought in, then you go down, right? It's that simple. It doesn't matter about anything else. That's what drives markets um, and, and what, what makes them continue trending or, 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 you know, end trending. And then the narrative follows, right? Nobody was talking about the carry trade until we started going down, right? Um, but we have this big melt up here, right? If the market wants to go higher, what's it got to do if we get to that critical mass? It's got to, it's got to push people out, right? So take a look here at the angle in the April correction, right? It's pretty steep. Now, everybody who shorted here um, got burned. So it ended up just being kind of a one-off pullback. What happened here? Was the angle steep? Not really. In fact, you could argue that outside of these two, three days here, it was actually kind of sideways, more kind of like that. So we had a lesser pullback here than we did here. And then we came up, we actually had a small, a mini little flag there. Um, and what was this pullback like? That was a straight up right angle. So what does that tell you here? Look at the difference in the angles. It means people are less willing to short these. So you're running out of bears. Obviously, then we topped. And what happens um, when we run out of bears? Everyone tries to buy that dip right there because everyone assumes it's just gonna do this again. And that's why we go down. Where am, what am I getting at here? Okay, so I'm saying a lot here. A lot of people will argue, well, this type of a move here is unhealthy. Um, the VIX move is unhealthy, uh, maybe. But I've seen many times in bull markets moves just like this that are actually very healthy. Um, why is that? Because again, if the market wants to go higher, it's gotta do more than just pull back three to five percent um you know the healthy move would be a oh, three to five percent little pullback little pullback right everybody imagines it being that easy but it's not going to be that easy this is the real bull case in the end of the year this move right here got people legitimately fearful right so let me repeat that legitimately fearful like they want out of the market or they are so uncertain that they're in cash this is not getting this part kind of got people fearful into uh with the the iran situation this got people a little fearful there was a lot of bears chirping about a rolling top nobody was fearful here 
Nobody was fearful here. They got legitimately fearful. The yen carry trade, Iran, um, the election, um, the uh, leverage short vol blow up. People remember that, right? That's, that's, not, gonna, that's not just going to get forgotten about. And it's probably part of the reason why we squeezed so hard because a lot of people went short down here. So that's going to be in play for a few months now. If people are legitimately fearful, they're not going to trust rallies. And I think that is probably the biggest piece of the bull case going into the end of the year. We can talk all day about um, overbought. We were overbought here. Um, I can point to you plenty of other flash crashes that were, you know, ended up being very bullish in the big picture, you know, 2015, 2014, we had one, two, we had three of them within the same, uh, same span of a year. And it led to a massive, massive move. So these, these types of moves tend to uh, have to happen. Um, we see them on an intraday basis too. Sometimes uh, we'll have, we'll just be sitting there in the trading room and the market will be, the market will sell off 25, 30 points in uh, an hour. And everybody's like, Aaron, what's going on? I'm like, that's fine. They're just, just doing their thing. But you have to get people out, right? And what if all this, so basically what I'm saying is what if this move here was just a simple, like we, the market's got to get people out and not just out for a little 3 to 5% healthy correction. Uh, it's got to get them fearful enough that we are not going to get to critical mass buyers um, so that we can continue higher. Now, we did, you know, you could argue that at least sentiment-wise, we're there. But this is sentiment and it's the three to six month sentiment. It's not necessarily positioning, which so it's a little different. This could reset with a pullback. That that number could reset, could reset with consolidation too. And we got to fifty um a few weeks ago too. I think we were when we were um right here. It dropped and then we went right back up. So that's sort of um yeah, I mean I can go into a lot more in depth, but um again I kinda wanted to keep the video on the short side here and um just kind of uh, get everybody to think about that and, and think about it. And there's, I don't think people really talk about it enough. I don't think traders talk about it enough, even in like educational videos and stuff. Um, but that's a, I mean, that's what moves the market, right? It's, it's a voting machine, um, not really a weighing machine so much. But um, yeah, think about it that way next time you're looking, you know, at markets in general. Um, moving people to fearful from just complacent. Um, sometimes the market needs to make those moves in order to do what it, what it really ultimately wants to do. So anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, I hope this video helped out. Let me know what you think. Again, I'm not really too biased. I have my bias in the year end. It's still deferring to the bull trend, and I have some other reasons too. But I do think that uh, the psychology here um, could play a big role should um, it end up being the, the bull move here. But again, bears have plenty of a, a case to make too. Uh, but they need to get to work here soon. So that's kind of my take on it there. So anyways, guys, I'll wrap it up here. You guys take care. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Come find me on counterpartrades.com. I'll see you guys all in the next video.